Fox Sports CEO Eric Shanks talked about Fox's five core rights deals that they currently own on the Marshand and Orand port, uh, excuse me, sports media podcast. And he was asked about whether or not Fox has any interest in the Pac-12. Now, his response was this. We've set our strategy, and I think we're really content and able to be opportunistic. So if there was something opportunistically with the Pac-12, uh, but now that we have the Big Ten and the Big 12 done, I think we're content with where we are. And if something came up, we'd definitely look at it. This does not sound good for the Pac-12 regarding their media rights. Uh, one of the two biggest sports distribution networks just made it publicly known uh, that they are not interested, really, in the Pac-12 package. Like, most people assumed that they would be interested to try and fill at least, like, their late Saturday or Friday night time slots uh, with the Pac-12, but Fox is apparently really only interested in bigger games for their linear network, and they've already got a contract with Mountain West, so their late-night windows are basically covered. Like, this is the first potential media partner that has gone public with a nicely put thanks but no thanks. Like, The Athletic just put out an article by Stuart Mandel. Uh, excuse me, it was Mandel, Auerbach, uh, Olsen, and Vanini, right? And they were discussing all the latest from this situation. Now, first, the Pac-12 was ahead of the Big 12 in the media rights picking order, and the Pac-12 started reaching out about getting a new deal done back in late July or early August. Well, here we are, six months later, the Big 12 got out ahead, already has a deal finalized, and and it's a deal that gives them the option of stealing Pac-12 schools and conference expansion, no less. And the Pac-12, as we've been discussing, is having to go and look for teams like San Diego State and SMU just to be able to get some kind of deal done. Now, that begs the question, why is that? Like, take this from that article. It says, three people with knowledge of the discussions said Commissioner George Klyovkov is struggling to find partners willing to pay close to what the league is seeking. Two of those sources said Klyovkov overpromised his members on how many bidders there would be and what dollar amount they could uh, command. A target north of $40 million per school, according to one league athletic director. Today, it is uncertain whether the Pac-12 will even be able to exceed the $31.6 million average that the Big 12 reportedly landed in a six-year extension with ESPN and Fox it reached last fall. Uh, the quote here is, We don't have a deal because it hasn't been good, said the AD. That's an AD. Like, the fact that this leak is coming from inside the conference is insane. This stuff usually does not happen. Now, this means that was, uh, the negotiations have been just an absolute disaster. Uh, there were rumors that the Pac-12 offers were like 250 to $270 million per year for Pac-12 rights, which with 10 teams is only, you know, 25 to $27 million per school. Now, are you telling me that inventory alone with potential expansion partners like San Diego State and SMU is going to bump that up by $5 million per school? I don't think so. I don't think so. Now, it should be noted that it does not include money from CFP expansion, uh, the NCAA tournament units, bowl game revenue, etc., which would definitely add to that, uh, that number. But it's going to add to the other conferences as well. Like, this is an absolute nightmare for George Klaovkov. Absolute nightmare. Oh, uh, let, let's talk about expansion. Let's talk about those expansion uh, rumors and thoughts. And it's not really a rumor, I guess, at this point. Uh, but Dennis Dodd at CBS and Brett McMurphy of the Action Network both reported on potential Pac-12 expansion. McMurphy tweeted, Pac-12 Commissioner George Klyovkov is visiting SMU on Wednesday. That was yesterday. Uh, sources told the Action Network. Uh, San Diego State and SMU are top Pac-12 expansion candidates the Pac-12 needs more members and more inventory for new media rights deal, which is expected to rely heavily on digital streaming services. Now, this is something that we talked about on the show just a couple of weeks ago. San Diego State and SMU are both nearing R1 status as academic uh, institutions, which would absolutely um, curry some favor with the Pac-12 presidents. But also, their market sizes, uh, as adding San Diego and Dallas is going to help with the recruiting, with television households, and more, Right. Now, per John Canzano, uh, he said adding San Diego State would get the Pac-12 back into Southern California and regain 1.13 million television households. Adding SMU would bring the Dallas TV market with it. That's 2.96 million TV homes. Uh, SMU plus San Diego State equals 4.1 million combined TV households, which is going to be attractive to media partners. But after the dust settles, the Pac-12 would still have 2.6 million fewer television homes than it did before the departures of USC and UCLA. 
Now, Klyovkov did visit U, uh, SMU yesterday, uh, and he, along with the other Pac-12 reps and SMU reps, were spotted at SMU basketball's 72-71 to win over Temple. Uh, there's been no news out of that. SMU won't talk about it. Uh, nobody's, nobody's talking. But the fact that it was done so publicly is very interesting because you don't normally see that kind of thing, right? So... Uh, Dennis Dodd's article at CBSSports.com is headlined Pac-12 expansion with San Diego State SMU may be necessary before the league inks new media rights deal. Now, this is not exactly news. Uh, Did the Pac-12 presidents want to stay at 10 schools? Probably. Uh, Almost certainly. Was it ever a realistic possibility with a new media rights deal being negotiated uh, and the conference being the last to the market? Probably not. Not really. Uh, There aren't a lot of big potential games left on the calendar, and the time slots on linear television are, for the most part, already taken up. Without USC and UCLA, the number of must-watch games has dropped significantly. Uh, Add in the reality that other lucrative properties are coming available, right? right? You got UFC coming up, you got NASCAR, uh, the NBA, WWE. This is just a recipe for disaster for this conference. Now, in Dodd's article, he states... Uh, significantly more than half of each season's Pac-12 football games will be primarily available via streaming as part of the conference's next rights deal, sources tell CBS Sports. Such a ratio is unprecedented for a Power 5 conference and for whichever streaming giant becomes the first to more fully embrace college sports. Now, the move would likely upset Pac-12 coaches, athletic directors, and administrators who rely on widespread visibility for their games via linear and network platforms for everything from... Uh, athletic recruitment to university enrollment. So basically, the Pac-12 may have been left with no other choice. And keeping a presence in Southern California, along with the biggest metro, uh, excuse me, the biggest metro area still available, Dallas, uh, those were the two best options, you know, still on the table. Uh, before we keep going, do me a favor. Uh, it's been a minute since I told you. Go ahead and hit that like button for me. If you haven't already, subscribe. Uh, toss your thoughts in the comments, etc. You guys know the drill. You guys know what we're doing here. All right, now, we already knew that we already knew that San Diego State and SMU were the favorites here, but could there be more? What happens if negotiations between San Diego State, SMU, and the Pac-12 fall apart? Uh, what, if they, what if the conference wants to jump to more than 12 teams? Well, per John Canzano, and you can read his stuff at johncanzano.com, uh, Fresno State has had short interactions with the Pac-12 per a well-placed conference source. Uh, Klyovkov has not visited the campus yet. California's Central Valley actually includes 2.3 million TV homes, which is more than San Diego State's edition brings. Now, that part is certainly attractive, but as Canzano states, uh, uh, Fresno's close proximity to the Bay Area may make Stanford and Cal uneasy. Now, that makes sense, considering Fresno's only like 160 miles away from Palo Alto, Uh, At the same time, I don't think Fresno is going to be recruiting the same kind of student athletes that Stanford and Cal will be. Like, maybe maybe I'm wrong on that. Uh, But this is also an issue for Boise State, who definitely doesn't bring the same number of households. I think it's only around like 510,000 or 520, whatever it is. Uh, But it is a much more well-known brand than any of the potential expansion targets that we're already talking about. The issue here is that Boise could be vetoed because certain Pac-12 schools recruit against the Broncos. Like Boise is less than 300 miles from Pullman, about 350 to Salt Lake City, and uh, less than 500 from Seattle, Corvallis, and Eugene. Uh, On the academic side, and and by this point, we all understand how important academics and research are to the presidents in the Pac-12, but Boise State is looked at as basically a junior college, right, by the remaining Pac-12 institutions. And Boise State fans do not get mad at me for that. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. Uh, Pushing Boise State in expansion could actually upset the biggest brands left in the conference. And it, honestly, Klyovkov's job right now is to not only keep the remaining 10 schools together, uh, but make sure that Oregon and Washington are happy. Like, that's what you didn't do with USC and UCLA, right? That, I mean, that's that's it. All right, so what about UNLV, right? The football success has not been there. They don't bring a lot as far as television households, only about 750,000. But it is a city and a region that is rapidly growing. Uh, They now have an NFL team. The Pac-12 championship has been moved to Allegiant Stadium. There's a plethora of potential sponsorship opportunities there, along with the fact that Klyovkov was an executive at MGM before taking over the commissioner's role with the conference. Uh, UNLV is certainly investing in their football program. They just fired Marcus Arroyo, who by all accounts appeared to have the program headed in the right direction after three years. 
Uh, but they hired former Arkansas defense coordinator and Missouri head coach Barry Odom. You know, it, it seems like a reasonable candidate here. So why is Fresno or Boise or UNLV, et cetera, even in play? Like if San Diego State and SMU are the favorites, that moves the league back up to uh, 12 teams. Uh, why would they be looking at even more, especially if the rumors are true, that you know Oregon, Washington, et cetera, are not in favor of expansion? Well, if the Pac-12 media rights negotiations are contingent on having uh, plenty of inventory, then the more teams, the better, I guess. Uh, Canzano uh, stated this as well, and I'm quoting, I'm told per a source that one of the media rights partners the Pac-12 is engaged with is looking for, quote, some tonnage. The unnamed entity would like to beef up the inventory. This sounds a lot like Amazon, which needs content for the sports app it floated a while ago. Now, how much inventory are we talking about here? Uh, with only 10 teams, once you move into the conference late, that would only be, what, five games at most per weekend? Now, while that's great for uh, making sure each game could be in a specific time window, let's say Friday night, uh, three staggered during the afternoon and evening, and then one late Saturday, uh, it's not great for a streamer that's looking for inventory, right? Especially on weekends when teams get a bye week, that cuts the number down to like four games or fewer. Uh, so if the Pac-12 just adds two teams in expansion – Going from 10 teams to 12, that bumps the inventory from 75 games per season up to 90, assuming a nine-conference game schedule. Now, along with uh, you know better odds that you'll get at least one decent matchup each weekend, right? Uh, so let's let's hit on that for a little bit longer. Like, how absurd is it that the Pac-12 is in a position where, in order to become appealing to potential media rights partners, the conference is having to go and look at expansion options? Like this is mind-blowing stuff. Like absolutely, my. Anyway, so stepping away from from the troubles there, uh, there is also the thought that the Pac-12 could add Fresno and Boise to keep the Big 12 from adding them and derailing future media rights negotiations. Uh, we all know that the Big 12 commissioner, Brett Yormark, has stated publicly several times that they want to get into the fourth time window, which, of course, is the Pacific time zone. I don't know that the Pac-12 is in a position to just add everybody that might be a possibility for the Big 12, but it is something to pay attention to. Like, if the Pac-12 streaming experiment does not go well, the next media rights negotiations are going to be really, really difficult for George Glavkoff and company. That's, that's the biggest issue. If the Big 12 starts adding a bunch of those teams from out west, they have some of that late-night inventory that some of these linear television networks would want. If the streaming thing doesn't work and Amazon decides to get out of it, there's nowhere left for the Pac-12 to go after that. Mm, 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 mm. So let's talk about the best potential Pac-12 TV games in the new league without USC and UCLA. Uh, let's look at this as if San Diego State and SMU are already confirmed into the conference, which obviously nothing has been voted on yet. So uh, as the old saying goes, you know, don't count your chickens. But let's just say that they do. What, what are some of the more appealing, more fun, or maybe just more interesting matchups that we could look to see down the road? Uh, the first one I wrote down here is San Diego State and Utah. Now, we've seen this matchup quite a few times. It's given us some pretty good games, two programs that go about things very similarly. Uh, another one that I came up with is SMU in Colorado. Like, this is the Pony Express in primetime. Uh, need I say more, right? Like, who, who knows how long Lashley or Sanders are going to be at their schools, but this is a fun, old-school matchup between two teams that were, uh, you know, really big back in, you know, the 80s or whatever. So... Interesting, fun matchup. SMU and Arizona. Jed Fish's offense against Rhett Lashley's offense. Uh, who knows what the coaching matchup will look like by the time this thing gets done, by the time SMU moves into the conference. But, man, you talk about a game that would have produced fireworks last year and, and should in the future with the way that both of these programs prioritize offense, right? San Diego State and Arizona State. That I'm doing this one mainly because I like the idea of the Sun Devils against the Aztecs. Like, it's a fantastic mascot battle here. Two fun cities and campuses, uh, an underrated uniform matchup, really. SMU against Oregon. This is another interesting uniform matchup, but also a big-time recruiting battle as, you know, Oregon has been known to go into Texas and grab some kids right out of SMU's backyard. San Diego State and Stanford, uh, red and black against red and white. That's one. We've also seen this matchup recently. San Diego State beat them 20-17 to back in 2017. And Stanford won 31-10 to in 2018. Uh, it, hey, why don't we just toss this one out there? San Diego State against SMU. Like, one team is built on defense, one team is built on offense. 
I don't know what kind of numbers this would do as far as TV, but it's got potential. Like the interesting thing here is that everyone else has that uh, built-in rivalry, right? You got Stanford, Cal, you got Arizona, Arizona State, you got Colorado, Utah, and you got Oregon, Oregon State, and the Apple Cup. Like, do we just pair up SMU and SDSU at the end of every season? Or do we maybe do, like, uh, Utah and San Diego State and, like, Colorado SMU? Like, of course, like, when it comes to TV, you've got some guaranteed big draws. You got the the trifecta of Washington, Oregon, and Utah all playing each other. You got the Civil War or whatever they're calling it now. Uh, the Apple Cup, the game, you know, Stanford and Cal. Anything Deion Sanders does is going to be gold. The Territorial Cup with Arizona and Arizona State, obviously... Some of these are bigger than others when it comes to straight numbers, but you know that these will draw eyeballs. Like, what kind of eyeballs will SMU and Oregon State draw? San Diego State and Washington State, Cal and SMU. Like, it's it's going to create some matchups that have very little intrigue to a national audience. Uh, either way, I, like, I think it's going to be interesting to keep an eye on. That's, that's what I'm looking for going forward. Psst. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE, and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.